All right, today my talk is going to be, um, it's titled Balance, Making the Shift, and we're going to use the Divine Principle as our um, mirror to kind of check ourselves and see where we are in our life as far as the things that are manifesting physically for us, as well as what's happening in our mental state and our emotional state. After each particular chapter that I go through, uh, I'm going to stop and ask if any of you guys have a question. If so, please feel free to chime in. Uh, I'm going to do a lot of reading today. There was an intention behind me um, not preparing for this talk, but more or less reading certain excerpts from the Divine Principle to bring forth the point I'm trying to make, hence the title, Balance, Making the Shift. <clears throat> I'm always big about definitions. I feel that they clarify everything. They put things in perspective. It takes the debate out because we agree that the dictionary is our resource for our language. It creates a foundation of absolute clarity so there's no misunderstanding. Balance, making the shift. The definition of balance, a state of equilibrium or parity characterized by cancellation of all forces by equal opposing forces. The power means to decide. Equality of totals in the debt and credit sides of an account. It's balancing things out in your life. To bring into or keep in equal or satisfying proportion or harmony. To bring into or keep in equal or satisfy, satisfying proportion or harmony. An even distribution of weight enabling someone or something to remain upright and steady. Very important words on the last of that sentence remaining upright and steady. Definition of shift, a change in attitude, judgment, or emphasis to manage to get along or succeed by oneself, to make a change in place or space, to assume responsibility. The world outside will always reflect to you what you think and feel, always. And in your experience of it, very simply, do you feel balanced? Without judging yourself, or the circumstance, or the world, or anyone, do you feel balanced by what's taking place in the dynamic of your life? Where does my internal work lie so I can create that state of equilibrium? Where? Obviously, it lies within ourselves. You already have the answer to that question. You can just ask yourself very simply inside, where does the work lie? You know where it lies. Look in front of, walk into a, your bathroom and look into the mirror and ask yourself, where does the work lie? The answer will come through. Another exercise I've used often and still do is when I look in the mirror, I say, I love myself. And the thought crops up, only if. And so you do the work and you tell you, ask yourself this question in the mirror every day. And when that voice no longer crops up, that lesson is complete. Then you may say, I love myself. And a new thought may crop up. And you do the same work until it's dissolved. You are always connected to source. The divine principle is made up in three parts. The first part would be recognize, recognizing God in everything everywhere all the time it's not just a concept well yeah Keith I get it God is on the presence everywhere there's more to it than that you have to intentfully look and in so doing when you pull God out of someone by finding an attribute that you really appreciate and you see as a God quality by your appreciation of them God steps to the fore God will walk out of that person right in front of your eyes. I've seen it for years. So the first part of the divine principle is about recognizing the divine in everything, everywhere, all the time. And what I mean everywhere, all the time, I mean all the time. Catch yourself slacking doing this and correct it. Everyone you meet, when I shake people's hand or give them a hug or kiss them side the face, my gesture says a lot. But if you can only hear what I'm doing inside of myself as I'm doing it. I'm affirming, I'm praying, I'm appreciating, 
I'm grabbing them because I want to be involved. The second part of the divine principle is plugging in. This um, program is actually called RPM, Recognize, Plug It In, Manifest. Part two, plugging in. Plugging into the source of power. When you want to change your life, we know that we go inside, but yet, even though we know these spiritual laws, rules, we still want to manipulate the world outside with force rather than changing ourselves and letting the universe take care of all the details in its own good way. The third part of the divine principle is manifest. Having the tools that you need to create your best life, the life that you were meant to live, living your passion. No amount of you feeling bad will heal anyone of anything, so says Wayne Dyer. So it's all about getting to a space of happiness so you can truly affect those people you are really wanting to help. Here we go. <clears throat> Always remember in the back of your mind, this program, though it seems like a pitch for the divine principle, the divine principle I'm using as a mirror to reflect where you may see you need internal work to be done. Walk into the one. Again, definition. Union. An alliance for mutual benefit. We talk about having unity with God, a, un a state of union with God. The bring together of two entities into a whole. Two entities into a whole. Because we still have the mindset, God, me. And the work is to bring those two together so there is no longer a God or a me. It is me. It is everything about me. It's everything I see, everything I feel, everything I do, everything I am. My whole life is consumed with God, so it naturally becomes a part of everything that I am, everything that I express. Scripture speaks of God as the living word, the essence of life itself. In the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. How hard can it be to see how people create grief, fear, and division within themselves by denying this most profound truth? When we live in a state of love, not only are we in the presence of spirit, it is there that we are able to consciously merge. When we live in love, God is in your body. God is in your mind. God is in your feelings. You may not feel this dramatic bang, these bells and whistles that God is in your body with this amazing, blissful experience and your aura expands you know, from here to there. But God is present and it is a beginning. It is the first steps to living God 24-7. And then those feelings of heightened bliss, heightened awareness naturally come. The human body is 99.9999% empty space. The other point zero 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 one percent, which is matter, matter is empty space as well. Matter consists of random blips of energy and informational discharges that solidify into a three-dimensional hologram, thus creating the illusion of solidity. So everything we see, tangible as it may seem, it's not real. It's not real. It's just energy with empty space and you break that down to a more subatomic level and it's just fewer energy particles with even more empty space and they scientists have actually broken down the atom the subatomic particle to quarks and so forth and they continue to find nothing they've, they've broken it down as far as it can possibly be detected by science and they can't find anything and that would be the world of the spirit. Can you see or imagine, if you will take this time to imagine, how everyone is one body that branches into many seemingly separate bodies on the physical plane? Imagine that you're a branch on a tree and God would not only be the roots, but it's the entire trunk and that life energy flows through all the individual parts. It's an exercise I still use, I'm using it now, I'm using it now seeing the, the infinite flow through everything. It's the life force that governs everything. The more you can see this truth, the more your tendency to judge anything will diminish because you will understand that everything is you. Not only people, events, 
circumstances. Things that are going right in your life. Things that are going wrong in your life. Everything is you. It's a manifestation of yourself. Thoughts that you have chosen. Feelings that you have selected. Your feelings are your power, but not also are they your power. They are, it's more accurate to call them indicators. Your feelings indicate to you what is coming into your life. It's a vibratory frequency that guarantees that you are riding this ride and you will eventually end up there. When we cast judgment, not only do we bring about a conscious breach between ourselves and the one cosmic body, when we judge, love begins to decay and fear begins to expand. Any questions? Good class. The next chapter of the Divine Principle, reflecting the balance that we're looking for in our life, is clarity. Definition of clarity. Clearness in various senses. The condition of being clean and free of contaminants. Absolute clarity is one of God's grandest attributes. For you to have it too will require a crystal clear intention, a lifelong commitment of your spirit, mind, and body, your feelings, thoughts, and actions, constantly working to dislodge and discard all beliefs that block your clarity's light. Every time you employ discipline and dedication, you will be getting closer to God at a conscious level. Every time you employ your intention to be clear, you are literally stepping closer towards God at a conscious level. Understand that the mind and body are not separate. Very important. Understand that the mind and body are not separate. For in the empty space of body is your mind. Actually, the body is the mind solidified. So if one part of the mind is ill, not clear, over time, what that part demands will begin to poison the body. And over time, you will actually be able to observe your body manifest the mind or the spirit, whichever one you have chosen to let govern your life. If you truly wish to bring perpetual love into your life, becoming pure is imperative. Only then can spirit lift you higher so that your dive from your ego into the arms of spirit will be a graceful one. Once your clarification and elevation begin to accelerate, people will recognize that you are living with more joy. That will be the confirmation of the work that you have put into your life. Judy has seen that. I have seen it in her. I see it in people all the time. They go in, life changes. Next thing you know, the people around them are jealous. They want to know, where are you getting all this joy from? And so now that opens the door for you to share with them. This is one of my favorite paragraphs in the Divine Principle. Clarity and love are the building blocks that give the universe its form and maintain its integrity. They are the code and the law which we must follow to become aware of spirit on an omniscient level. It's a reality that is only accessible to those who are no longer within shouting distance or whispering distance of the ego's voice. Infinite possibilities reside within you now. Can you see them? Can you hear them? Can you feel them? Any questions on the subject of clarity?